Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program in the experimental build of version 1.2. Last episode, we sent Valentina into orbit, our first Kerbal to ever enter space orbit, and we returned her safely with some extra science. I think there may have been a couple of um, crew reports that we might have missed, I'm not sure, and I think we still need to do a material study in the lower atmosphere. But overall, things are going well. We have no contracts um, right now because we went and completed them, which is great. Got a couple interesting missions here. I do like these tourist ones. Um, yeah, these are fine. It's kind of odd that these two, um, these two tourists in the same flight, they actually have slightly different requirements, although you could still complete it in one flight. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to carry two extra people into orbit right now. Um, double uh, suborbital isn't bad if we need the money, but right now we don't really need that much cash. And these missions here where they require you to do experiments at a certain place at a certain height, I tend to just ignore them. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our own scientistic endeavors, scientistic endeavors. Sure, it's a word, shut up. Uh, we have 75 science, which isn't enough to get anything in this row because it's all cost 90. We could go and get some of the general construction over here. This, by the way, is this crew cabin allows you to fit two crew members in here, uh, which is one of the ways you can get your tourism going on. Let's also unlock struts. Uh, the one I really want, though, is the fuel systems. This dramatically changes our ability to go into space. Although I don't think we've got... Um, radial lead couplers yet, so I think we'll have to unlock this at some point. I guess I could just grab that now, because we're going to want that at some point. It gives us the winglets, which is kind of fun. We do have enough for some aviation. We could work on a plane, which is actually really easy to do. Or more importantly, you know what? This gives us some, um, some landing gears. We're going to grab that, because if we go to our space plane hangar, this actually gives us the ability to make a little bit of a science rover. What we're going to do is... Um, we do have jets... I guess we'll do that. That's the really tiny one, right? Yeah, just because just it looks better, we'll use that. Although, let me go and put down the Science Junior there. That there. Um, a rocket engine in the back. Oh, yeah, it's just the Juno, which is tiny, so it'll look a little bit funny. I'll tell you what, I guess we, we really could use this one. No matter what, it's going to look kind of funny. I don't suppose we've got a no, structural bit for the... Um, the size differential. Oh, right, and the intake is circular. Okay, let me let me refresh here. Don't save. We're actually going to start with this command module because the air intake can go there. And that looks still pretty ridiculous, but that's okay. Then a science junior. Then, you know what, I will go... Uh, the size is still off. But I think, actually, our weight distribution will be a little bit easier to deal with if we do that. And then we throw the jet engine on here. So the difference between a jet engine and a rocket engine, the jet engine only needs liquid fuel um, in, because a regular fuel tank contains liquid fuel and oxidizer, which allows it to burn in space. A jet engine only li needs liquid fuel, and instead of burning an oxidizer, it needs oxygen from an air intake. So that will give us that, which should be okay. Uh, then we can throw some wings on here. Uh, I think just the... Structural type wings is going to be fine here. It's not going to be a very pretty flyer, but it will work Hopefully uh, the tail fins are their own Control surface. I don't I think that's gonna be a little overkill here. I mean honestly everything's kind of overkill with this What the hell That's oh, no, way too big Let's use the winglets. They're still pretty big, but what the hell. I'm going to put this as far back as possible. Um, and... Oh, we can't attach elevons on there. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Tail fin it is. And that. Although I suppose we could just go with the twin tail fin design, because this is, this is ludicrous. Uh, I think a little lower. Oops. It's lower, we get a little bit less yaw, but that should be okay. So now what we need to do is we need to take a look at our aerodynamic overlay and our center of mass. And it's important that our center of lift is, is behind the center of mass, but just barely. Oh, we don't have the wheels yet, so we're going to have to make an adjustment. Um, and we still need some elevons on the wings over here. There we go. Like that, so that we can roll. So we're going to control pitch mostly by um, our tail, 
and we roll with this. And yaw, we're going to have a little bit of it from this. Not much, though. Um, and we're going to mostly test this on the ground to start off with, actually. So we'll see how that goes. Um, what am I looking for? Utility. We're going to get a fixed landing gear in the back, just behind the center of mass. If this is in front of the center of mass, then you will, um, your tail will like flip down. We're going to put it just behind like that. Uh, you know what? We can leave them um, cambered like that. That's going to be okay. Although if you don't like it, you can use the rotation tool, grab it, and just do that. Get it. There we go. What the hell? We'll do that. Be a little bit more stable. And then turn off symmetry and stick you somewhere over here. That looks okay. All right. So our center of lift is still behind, um, behind our center of mass. It's because of these ridiculous tail fins. Well, let's, let's see what this happens. Um, we need to, I want to stick some more science on here is the idea. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to get a two hot thermometer. And actually, you know what would make life a lot better? Is the storage unit back there, actually. It still leaves everything fine. So then we can collect all that stuff and bring it in. So we don't have to keep transmitting, which is nice. Um, and the person who's going to fly this, actually, is going to be a scientist. All right, let's give this a try. Science plane one. So we're going to launch. Oh, um, as an emergency method, what I'm going to do is throw a couple of parachutes on here near the center of mass. There we go. So that if we get ourselves in trouble in the air, we can just deploy parachutes rather than trying to land, which is really nice. Okay, launch this. So what are we, why are we doing this? Well, the reason we did this is because I want to be able to run science experiments in many different places here. Oh yeah, can't SAS, that's fine. I'm going to launch the jet engine. Low friction on the front tire, otherwise things will happen weirdly. And we're not going very fast, and that's okay. I'm actually not looking for speed here. I'm actually going to cut that and start applying some brakes here. Actually, you know what? I think this auto is fine as long as it's not too heavy. What we're trying to do is we're just, for now, we're not even using this as a plane. We're simply using this as a way to tour the science center and collect the science that is at all these buildings. Because they each count as a different biome, which means we can run our experiments again. All right, doing this thing is actually pretty good. So, for example, here, get a crew report from the space plane hangar. So we're going to keep that experiment. We're going to observe the mystery goo. We're going to observe the materials bay. Keep all that, and we're going to log the temperature. Then I should be able to right-click on the storage unit, collect all. And now it says the, um, the material bay and the goo thing, it says it's inoperable. And the reason is you normally can't redo them. But we have a scientist, and if you have a scientist on board, what your scientist can do is restore the boot, the goo bay and restore the science junior. Also, while we're here, we can do an EVA report from the SPH. Yes, we don't need a spacesuit, but it looks cool. And then we can go ahead and board. There we go, and everything is ready to repeat. So what we're going to do is hit a few more of these buildings. Let's give it a little bit of throttle. Oh, turn off the brakes. Kill the throttle. And just coast over here. So we're still not using it as a plane as is, and I'm not sure that we're going to have the control authority that we really want here um, with this ridiculous fin. But what's great is we can go around and just troll for all the science here. Oh, no, we've got that already. What about over here? Crew report? Nope. How come this is not giving us a... Um, A different biome. Have they changed things? So you don't farm this area the same way? I don't think so. Let's go over here. That's the astronaut center. Maybe that's not, is that's not a separate building? I thought it was. But let's go over here. This is, this is where the astronauts live. Um, it's, uh, it's basically just an old mobile home. So, you know, Kerbal astronauts are not very highly regarded there. Oh, this is administration. Sorry. So we're going to hit the brakes. We're going to keep that experiment. 
we're going to run the goo, we're going to run the science junior. So that's locked. Did I not reset that properly? How come I can't run you? There we go. Restore. There you go. Observe. Wonderful. Do that. Um, log the temperature. We're going to run an EVA from here. We're going to board. I'm going to pull everything into the storage can canister over here. And then again, we'll EVA. Restore. Okay, there we go. Restore and board. Release the brake. And let's do that some more. Got a little bit of thrust going on. Kill the thrust and move to another building. Is this really not a building? Maybe I have to park myself just next to it. We'll see how it goes. So you want to avoid going too fast when you're doing this because it's very easy to tip over on the ground. Very easy. They have tweaked the um, the wheel physics again, though. Okay, let's hit the brakes here. No, do not hit the wing. I'm a little bit worried about where we are. Um, crew report? Nope, nothing. All right. Um, I think we might be stuck because we've got no reverse here. <laughs> Can I just, like, shuffle away? Is it possible? It might be. I might be able to do a bit of a shuffle dance. You know what the plan B is? Bob, you're going to get out and push, man. Oof. I'm used to doing EVAs on uh, foreign bodies that are much lower in gravity. Push, 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 push. You can do it. I have faith in you, Bob. Yes. All right, now the question is, can, oh, it's forgot to set the parking brake. Oh yeah, we can't, we can't take off here. So can I get back in the ship? I'm not sure that we can without a ladder. Oh, I'm gonna get run over. People die doing that. All right, I guess that's it. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and uh, just recover what we've got. This is gonna recover just Bob by himself, but then we can recover the space plane as well. Get a little bit more science, which is nice. We're gonna try to take off and see if we can actually fly on this one. I'm a little scared that this is going to result in someone dying. Especially if the runway is bumpy as it is. Do we want to... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to invest in a better runway. All right. Science plane one. We're going to have Jebediah here. And he's a pilot. So he's not going to be able to reset his experiments. But we're going to see if this bad boy flies. So now I can turn on SAS, which is nice. Full throttle. And go. Go, 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 go. Um, the Delta V, the amount of like fuel that you burn using the uh, the Juno here, like it burns very little fuel. Jet f engines are much more efficient than rockets. And as such, the Delta V, we probably have enough fuel here to go around the world. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> Let's revert that. <clears throat> Um, I pitched back a little too far here. Yeah, which makes sense with this design. That was just a, that wasn't a real run, that was just a simulation. I could hit the brake a little bit sooner. I'm actually surprised that we, uh, destroyed so much. We're gonna try to go a little bit more horizontally first. Yeah, that was just a simulation, that was not for realsies. <clears throat> Space planes. Yeah. Just pitch up a little tiny bit. And then pitch down, there we go. There we go. Be nice if we could retract our landing gear, but it's not to be. Lovely. Oh, it's actually very stable. So let's see if we can go to the highlands or the mountains and get some science from there. Very nice. Oh yeah, we've got the monolith over there too. Ah, oh, this flies like a dream. Like a dream, as long as you don't um, pitch up too aggressively on takeoff. We could put the uh, wheels a little further back. The difference is, if you put the wheels further back, sometimes you have problems pitching up in the first place. Just, whoop, you don't want to go too far away from your um, your prograde here, because you could easily stall out. It's not necessarily going to be the most robust uh, airframe here. Although, since it doesn't have um, swept wings or anything like that, it actually will be quite good at low speed flight. Although that's all we can manage here. We'll be, uh, we're definitely not going supersonic with this. 
but that's okay. This is the smallest jet engine, and we are a little heavier because we've got a ridiculous amount of fuel, and you can see, like, the fuel is going to last forever. We may not literally be able to go around Kerbin like this, but we can do a pretty impressive amount, and I think there's an alternator in here as well. Yeah, there is. You can look at the, uh, the air intake. Effective airspeed is actually larger than our actual air speed. Huh. Lots of airflow. That's fine. We could go quite high with this, actually, and still be quite comfortable, but we're not going to do that. This is barely more than the equivalent of a propeller plane. I like the sideways drift. It looks really cool, actually. So, um, I think this is all still grasslands. Let's see here. We never got the low atmosphere. There we go. So we should get that now. We won't be able to reset this. I will close the doors. But we won't actually be able to reset the experiment. The mystery goo, we've got nothing to do here because we've done the low atmosphere. We get a little bit more experience, but I'd rather get the uh, Highland stuff. And the crew report. Oh, flying over the grasslands. Um, I'm going to keep that experiment, and I'm going to go and collect that in a rear container so I can rerun it again, which is nice. Um, temperature. You know what? We could get this. May as well. It's just a tiny bit, but we'll collect all that data again anyway. All right. And so what we're doing is we're going over there. There's, um, I'm not exactly sure where the threshold between the highlands and the mountains are. Actually getting like a mountain experiment is often a little bit tricky. But we're going to see if we can't um, land somewhere anyway. Run a, run a goo canister, get another EVA report. I like the, uh, the, the trail of spoke here. That's very cool. I, wonder, I don't think you ever get contrails in vanilla, do you? Because that's not a contrail, is it? Isn't that, I'm thinking of the um, um, the thing that comes off the wingtips. I might be getting my terms confused. Contrail, what's the other thing? Vapor the trails. I don't know. You know, cl the cloud formation that happens from the air pressure change and weird things. I mean, you also get the cloud formation that comes out of the exhaust too. So I don't know if this is actual exhaust or if it's that sort of thing. Someone will have to enlighten me in the comments. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> I should not do that. There's no way this plane can put up with that kind of punishment. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to bother trying to come in for a proper land. Look at the fuel we've got, though. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, we, were, we could have had a faster one if we'd brought just the smaller one, but I don't know. It's actually... It's slightly more convenient to design your planes when you've got a slightly larger airframe because you've got more room to tweak. Sometimes, especially if you're playing with the... Um, the FAR mod, sometimes you end up with like wings and positions that don't really look natural anymore if you've got a very tiny plane. But it all tends to normalize once you've got a larger one. Let's take a crew report over here. Um, yeah, it's inappropriately giving us credit for the same thing because we haven't actually returned it. We actually don't get that much science from that. I was just using that to see what biome we were over. I think the highlands start over here. And for landing on the mountain, you'd actually have to land, like, really on one of these things. And it's quite tricky to land directly on top. Although, with the parachute landing system, we may be able to pull that off. And I'm actually wondering about doing something like that. I'll have to go up, but we might be able to swing it. Speed's dropping a bit, because we're actually going upwards. But the land is going upwards. If we go inside of our capsule... We've actually got a ground radar in here, uh, right there, ground radar. So we can see how high above the ground we are, which is different from our um, altitude above sea level, which is what this is. Then it'll be quite obvious when we land over here, we'll be landing, but we'll still be like 500 meters above sea level or something of that nature. So let's take another look here. Mm, what am I looking for? Crew report. Oh, Highlands. Highlands have started here. Interesting. So, well, we'll keep this. That's fine. And then collect it. And can we get temperature ratings from here? Yeah, actually. There we go. Keep that as well. Lovely. And actually, I guess we'll do the goo here. Because we'll get more... Oh, no, it's flying at Kerbin. Okay. So the goo does not have um, biome for in the air. It does have biome on the ground. But that's it. So let's see if we can make it um, a mountain landing. Again, I won't land naturally, especially on the mountains. We're just going to deploy the parachutes when we are pretty comfortable with where we are. And hopefully still land on the wheels because the wheels are resistant to higher impacts. Vroom! That looks very cool. Man, it makes me want to play flight simulators. I love flight simulator games. And I love making planes here in Kerbal as well. They're a lot trickier if you've got FAR. 
Uh, mostly because um, you need to use the FAR tools to figure out the um, the correct design for your your wing position, uh, but as well as like you know more specifics about your tail and your um, rudder to get a stable design, especially as you go um, um, like you cross over into mock speeds, you go supersonic, then your geometry changes considerably. And there are some of those effects here in, in vanilla as well without those mods, but they're considerably reduced. So if you come up with a stable design, it's mostly just going to be stable. And it's a lot easier to get that. So FAR is really interesting. It stands for Ferrum Aerospace um, Research or something like that. Um, but it's the FAR mod and it just adds more realistic aerodynamic design, but it does make life a lot more complicated. Okay. Are we over a mountain? Crew report. Nope. And yeah, we've already got the goo and everything like that. Right? I can't run you again. Wait. Yeah, no. Oh, maybe I haven't run the goo. That's right. No, I haven't, because we have to wait until we're landed. Uh, are we over a mountain? Crew report. Yes, we are. Okay, keep that. Um, do the temperature. Temperature. Before I hit the mountain, please. Collect that. Kill the engine. Um, you know what? Actually, let's go to the top. It's okay. Actually, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to climb over it. Oh, no. We're stalling. So I'm just going to deploy the parachute. I'm worried if we land on our back end that that'll hit. But no, we're nicely balanced. We did try to pay attention to that. Plus, I mean, I've got reaction wheels in the crew hatch, so I can twist myself a little bit. We're going to turn on the brake so that as soon as we touch... We don't roll down the mountain, hopefully. And on the ground, I will try to run all the experiments. So I'm, I guess I can pin you. Can I pin more than one thing? Yeah, there we go. And you, and you, so that we can run all these. Just in case we start rolling down the hill, I want to run all the experiments before we um, we take off. But we've already done the goo in the air, or the material bay in the air. So we'll have to come back if we want to get... Um, research from the ground on the mountains for the material bay, but I don't think we need to do that. It's worth noting, you don't have to go around and farm all the science from Kerbin itself. It's a nice early boost, but it pales in comparison to the science that you get in space, and more importantly, landing on another body. For example, landing on Minmus or the moon will return you hundreds of science, as opposed to the, the dozens that you might get doing this kind of stuff. But uh, the initial uh, techs are cheap, so this will allow us to unlock a few, and we need those techs to get to those other places. So we've got the brake on. <sighs> okay, thank God. I mean, I wasn't too worried about smashing. I was mostly worried about losing all of our science and having to do that again. Um, I'm going to... Oh, I can't collect? Oh, maybe I've already done it. Uh, so, from the ground... Oh, we're, 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 <laughs> we're uh, falling here. We're going to log all this keep it all and we are oh, I can't I can't recover my ship because we're still moving we're still sliding I wonder if I could stop it by doing a little jiggle because you can't recover unless you're static and if we keep sliding down this hill which is exactly what's happening here you can see it I don't know if you can see it it's, it's kind of dark but I can tell that I'm sliding down and we've got some speed here, but oh, oh, we just hit zero. There we go. Recover the vessel. I was hoping we'd eventually skid to a stop. Well, eventually we would. It might just be at the bottom. We got 93 science from that. We lost the engine. It was not the cleanest flight. We did have that one uh, <clears throat> simulation run that didn't go so well, but uh, there we go. I won't be doing the, um, the reset too often. Um, it's mostly just like, we'll revert if a takeoff is like, there's something clearly a little bit odd because again, those simulations will show us if something's going to shake us apart or if we're off center or whatever. Um, but you know, if something goes wrong during the mission itself, well, that's probably just going to be that anyway. So if we're going to go quite far, we need solar panels. That is not optional. We need solar panels if we're going to go and do a more significant space-based mission. In particular, the solar panel plus this core, this probe core, will let us um, make a proper satellite, which is pretty awesome, actually. On the other hand, space exploration over here gives us the press mat barometer, which is more science, and that's very good. Flight control. Yeah, there we go. There's, there's our proper winglets. The small inland reaction wheel is nice when combined with the... 
Um, the Probodobinine Stiputnik is a satellite that does not have its own reaction control system, so you need you need a reaction wheel for steering or anything like that. General construction, and again, we do want the fuel systems, but but we can't go anywhere without any solar power. So we're going to grab this. We have just enough. This These are just flat panels. They don't deploy or anything like that, but they are solar panels, and they do give us proper probe core, and I'm wondering now if we might start to get some missions to run some proper satellites. Um, yeah, I don't... Well, that's doable. I want to cancel some of these. So all these ones over a specific area. I'm going to get rid of some of those. Explore moon. There we go. Moon flyby. That is definitely within our range. Definitely. We have solar power now, so we can do a longer mission. Even just doing a flyby, we're going to get a ton of science from, well, just regular sciencing. Plus, completing this contract is good. It gives us some money, which is very nice. Test a heat shield while landed. I'm just going to go ahead and complete this, because that's trivial. So we make test a heat shield while landed. We just go, we, I don't know, have some sort of command module, doesn't matter what it is, and we have a heat shield, and then we launch, and then we right-click on the heat shield, and we run the test, and we get some free money. But it's another way for us to, there we go, done. It's another way for us to cycle some of these quests, but rather than just um, cancel it. So there's no penalty to Xing away a quest here. If you don't like it, like I don't like these, you X away, there's no penalty to doing that. But if you take a quest and then fail to complete it or runs out, what, same thing again? Oh, okay, sure. Um, then you can't do it. Bum, 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 bum. So literally the same ship a second time. Usually it doesn't repeat. You got kind of lucky there. I mean, farming this stuff's not particularly exciting, but it is a great way to raise some funds. Yeah, there it is again. All right, recover the vessel one more time. I'm hoping that it gives us some sort of, like, satellite mission. We don't really need to set up a satellite network right now, though. See, I don't care about that. A bigger heat shield. Um, da, 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 da. If we do do the lunar flyby, then it'll give us um, more interesting quests afterwards. So I don't think I'll worry about these. I think what we're going to do is we are indeed going to plan our lunar flyby mission. And very much like our very first um, orbital mission, I think it'll be a lighter weight kind of design to the point where, you know, we can do the flyby without a, um, without a person. This actually might be an excellent time for us to test the new probe system and the signal because we do have a couple of, of uh, antennas. So the high gain antenna here has a range of 5 million um, meters or kilometers one of them but it can i'm sure it can reach the moon whereas these are 500k okay they must it must be in kilometers because this antenna can definitely reach well 500k would definitely reach from orbit yeah i'm actually quite it must be in meters now million meters so is the moon how far away is the moon i don't know i'm actually thinking that might not be enough if that's in meters um Kerbal Moon Wiki. How far away is the moon? I think we can even find it in, in game, but. Da, 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 da. Um, um, how do we find out how far away it is? I mean, its sphere of influence is 2.5 million meters. Yeah, okay, so this high gain antenna, assuming it's in meters, is so not going to be enough, because it's only double the distance of the sphere of influence of the moon, which is so not the distance between Kerbin and the moon itself. So we can't do... I mean, we could fly by with the satellite, but we won't have a signal, so that would be totally the dumb. So these are just set, meant to set up um, um, networks above Kerbin or something like that. Anyway, I guess I have to put a cut in here, but uh, I will go ahead and design something that's very similar to the orbiter. Actually really similar to the orbiter but uh, but we don't have that's true we don't have the fuel valve still I think I think we can do it you don't need that much more Delta V to reach the moon uh, if you you can reach orbit we do have the radial decouplers we've got solid rocket boosters to give us the initial kick. I think we can pull it off. We'll see what we can do, but we'll have to wait until next time. Maybe next time, if we get lucky, we will do a flyby on the moon. See you then. Bye-bye.